What's up, my name is Rad Seacrest. I created an animated show called Keepo. We all wanna make the coolest stuff, but there's a problem. Even if the studios want to make cool stuff, they're afraid. It's really hard to make new things that nobody's made. And we created Project City as a way to do that. My name's Chase Conley. I'm a director, character designer, illustrator. I'm Ethan Becker. I'm a director in animation as well. I'm Andre. I'm a writer, man. I'm the, I'm the king of story, you know what I mean? Hi, I'm Karan Stone. I'm a, a character designer, and I've been working in the animation field for 11 years. There's this <laughs> giant hole in the industry, and all of us are going, we know exactly what we want to make. Exactly. We wanna ma and you try to go pitch this to the studios, and they're like, nah, how about more Cocoa Melon? Which, that's cool. That's cool, too. Everything, that's cool. Yeah, 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 Cocoa Melon. You know I mean? After I, Kipo came out, they literally said, can you pitch us something like that's cool. I walked away from that meeting. I'm like, no, yeah. I don't want to make that kind of, I yeah. want to make cool stuff. Right. That's kind of why we're actually building a crowd investing platform. So we're taking the IP and slicing it up into small fractions and selling Slice. the shares. All right, let's just say I'm like somebody that wants to see some dope animation and I see this project on Project City. I can put money into it and then I hold a piece of that stock. Is that right? Yeah. And so the fans can actually fund this stuff and you own a part. So all the money that gets made from that project, you get a slice of that. What's the coolest stuff we could make if we just pretend like we don't have to deal with pitching? Mm -hmm. And like you pitch me basically like, I mean, it's probably better if you say it. A group of some kids, you know, being some taggers, you know, graffiti artists outside of uh, South LA, Watts, Los Angeles, you know, and they go outside the norm and instead of being like in like, you know, a rap group or anything, they, they create a punk band and then they try to make a song and it actually goes viral. And then right when it goes viral, the world goes to shit. It's really a representation of a lot of things that happen in South Los Angeles. I've seen some of the greatest artists, some of the greatest basketball players, some of the greatest football players fucking the top of their game and one thing ruins it all. It's a sad thing. It actually chokes me up a little bit. You're on the street now, you know? So I grew up like, you know, where like, cause I've been a big guy my entire life. I'm 6'5 now, almost 6'6. Six, six. So like, I always had this like stigma on my back of like just being this like super tough guy. My dad's like, you know, super banged out and like, you know, been in and out of prison like my entire life and even before my life, you know? So he's always like, be tough, be a man. And like trying to make a song, you know, was weird to him. Like, why are you trying to like, you know, do something that men do? Like men make songs, like, you know? Like it was just very like gung ho on being tough. It was, it never had nothing to do with, you know, like what I did, it was just how I did it. And then I just want to erase that stigma on, you know, black kids in general. Cause even if you're big, small, like I feel like you go inside of a black household and then like, they're telling a 10 year old and a five year old, you gotta be a man. Like dog, like the dude ain't even got hair on his nuts yet, you know? So like, I just want to be able to have kids know that, you know, when you're a black kid, you're just expected to be right. tough. There's a lot of things I couldn't do. And that's what I want to portray in this show. You know, the showing that kids could do things that, you know, are other than normal for a black kid. They can be in a punk band. They could be graffiti artists. They could be, you know, models. Black people in specific, we are poorly represented inside of uh, media, especially inside of animation. I don't believe in black exploitation. You know, I don't believe in giving the black person the basketball and saying, that's what you need to do. Seeing what you guys are doing mm. has like inspired me to come back and try to step up my game like ethan when you showed me what you were doing i was like oh damn man i'm just tired I... of making some scooby-doo i don't want to make <laughs> any more scooby-doos i want to tell some stories that matter basically what i'm trying to do is cre recreate breaking bad but in animation we haven't seen that yet and i want to tell some real stories when i was really little we had a uh, very abusive household i have two younger brothers and my stepdad was a complete maniac and i was like 10 years older than them still am honestly but uh, <laughs> I had to make a decision at that point, you know, am I going to go and live my own life and leave these kids behind or am I going to try to stay for them? And I decided to go and do my own thing and I had to make that decision. I haven't seen that story that much of having to leave your young siblings behind and what you kind of have to deal with and what they have to deal with in the aftermath. I want to create stories like that and there's certain things that studios won't let me do. There's certain stories that they won't let me tell, there's certain drugs they won't let my characters take, and there's certain scenes that they won't let me do. For real shit, like uh, sexual abuse and drug abuse and very weird freaky stuff that happens in life that messes people up. And studios aren't gonna let me do that for the most part, or they're gonna have some notes. That's why I'm excited about the Project City stuff is because now I can own that and it can all be me. If people People want to see that they can put money into that and help me tell that story and that's that's why I'm excited about it there's a lot of stories that I have to tell but there are some that I want to see told 
my way. And this is my opportunity to do that. You know why? Because I don't have to adhere to a format that the studio is telling me to do. I can do what I fucking want. For me, it was like I grew up watching, I wanted to have an emotional investment in it. I grew up watching certain shows for Anime Saturdays in like 99. That's how I saw Fatal Fury. I saw Kishan. So, and, and, and Battle of the Planets, Gachamon would come on, you know, all of that stuff, right? And so once I saw, I was like, well, you know what, man, I want to try to do a love letter to that. And so my project is, uh, it's called it, Robot yeah. Hunter Rossum, right? Which is going to be really ill and really dope. First off, I want to see black people in some really like high sci-fi. All of my projects have kind of been love letters to my favorite shows. When I think about like Cowboy Bebop, Watanabe was inspired by Lupin. You can see it when you see the characters, right? They're all the, each character. Spike is Lupin. I wanted to do the same thing. I was really inspired by just like the Tatsunoko stuff. You know, I love Gotcha Man. And I really wanted to incorporate some Sakuga type stuff. But we don't get a chance to really do that really balls to walls action stuff. There's gonna be an audience for every single one of our different projects. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is these days. Mm -hmm. You don't just make a single show and then that's just the whole nation. It's now we have a whole group of people, different communities that are gonna be excited to see every single one of our projects. I remember when I was a kid, I stayed home like eight, nine hours a day just drawing. Uh, because of that, going outside was like, weird because I was so socially awkward. It was weird that I didn't even know how to talk to people. And so I created a character for those type of people that spends most of her time working on her craft, what she loves, her passion and all that stuff. And now she goes out and explores and comes up with creative ways in order to be a witch. It's a, it's totally different in terms of story of how you've looked at, you know, witches. You know, history hasn't given us that yet. Your hero is not always the, the hero that you see on, uh, on television and movies. Sometimes they're black, sometimes you're Hispanic, Asian, you know, so I want to show the variety of hero out there and put them in different settings. Train in school from elementary, junior high to high school to work for someone else and not really to think for yourself. It also works that way when it comes to, you know, a creative job as well. Like you end up working for Disney and DreamWorks, but you don't necessarily do what you want to do mm -hmm. you know even though you're you're working as an artist professionally making pretty good money but you're not working on your own thing your own vision right you know so this gives you the opportunity to do that we're actually going to stream our process as we make the brave war so you could actually be taking a class watching us make our project and then making your project as well along with us. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see a ton of projects get made on this platform. I'd love to see just all the coolest stuff that people are trying to make their passion projects. If you feel like you're innovative and you, and you have these these creative ideas, this is probably uh, the best place to go. So you can see how people are developing their ideas and make it into an animated project. And then you can later on decide if you want to do it yourself. Right. So yeah, um, Project City, I feel like it's one of the best. Yeah. Are you tired of your exec dancing in your video? <laughs> <laughs> all up in the video. All up in